Let's make a new spoil board for a Onefinity CNC machine. Warning. 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 This video may sound like a sales pitch. There's an endless amount of ways to make a spoil board, but my intent is to help remove some of that hair pulling frustration that newbies get when they're trying to figure things out and to show you the techniques I use to make my spoil board. Hopefully you'll get a few aha moments and catch on. I have a Onefinity journeyman, so in this video we're going to focus on how I did that, but it applies to all of the machines. That aside, here's the dimensions for each machine. We have the machinist, and for that, you're going to cut your MDF board to a size of 16 and 3 quarters and 16 and 3 quarters. Uh, the grid will come out to be 16 by 16 for your cutting area. For the woodworker, you want to cut your MDF piece to a size of 32 and 3 quarters by 32 and 3 quarters. Uh, the grid will be 32 inches by 32 inches. That's your cutting area. And for the journeyman, uh, it's a size of 48 and 3 quarters and 32 and 3 quarters that you want to cut your sheet of MDF to. Uh, the grid size is going to be 48 by 32 and that's your cutting area. So I'm not going to show you how to create the file in Vectric in this video. I already have that done. I'm going to show you how you use that file to create the spoil board. I'll save that tutorial for a whole nother video. I don't want to make this one too long. So I used VCarve Pro to create this file, but it will work in any of the Vectric softwares. Uh, but just a little caveat, if you want to buy the plans and follow along, they're $1.75 on Etsy. I'm not charging a lot of money. Uh, they may go up as time goes on if Etsy raises their fees, but I'm keeping it cheap. You just spent thousands of dollars on a machine. You just bought a ton of bits. The last thing you need to do is spend $25 on plans to make a spoil board. These plans are here to help you follow along to save you some time so you can get the carving right away. So let's get into what I did here. I'm gonna go ahead and load the file and it's right here. And you can see it has all three. It has the journeyman, it has the woodworker, and it has the machinist. And we're gonna focus on the journeyman. Now if I come over here in the drawing tab and I go to sheets right here, yeah, you can see here all these job dimensions. Do not change them. Okay, when we're in the drawing tab, just leave the dimensions or it's going to mess things up. So we're working with the journeyman. And what we want to do is we want to check out the tool paths real quick so you know what's going on. So we can go up here, click on this, it just pops everything over to this side. So you can see here, so you can see here we have four different tool paths. And they're all in order. This is the order that you will cut them in. When you save them in G-code, it'll save them in this order. You want to do the flattening first. Then you want to create the grid, then you want to do top circles, and you want to do inner circles, which we'll get into. I'm going to show you those, what they are and what they do, okay? But you want to save those. You're, you want to leave those. All right, so let's look at flattening tool path. This one is important. Right here, you can change your bits. You can put whatever bit flattening bit you want in here. But the only thing is, for this to work properly, it's going to have to be at least an inch. Otherwise, we're going to have to go in and change some parameters. The one I use is an inch and one eighth. I will link all the bits I used in the description below. Um, but you can change these. If you change this bit, if you want to select a different bit that you have, you certainly can, can do that when you're in this tab for the pocket for the tool paths. Do not change any of the other parameters. You can change the bit. Do not change any of the other parameters and be sure to hit calculate so that it recalculates everything. All right, I'm going to reset preview and I'm going to preview all. And here's what it's going to do. Your machine is going to flatten everything. It's going to create the grid, inner holes, or outer holes and inner holes. All right. So now with all that being covered, hit the like button, have a sip of coffee. Let's head to the shop. Well, here's the current state of my spoil board on my journeyman. And as you can see, it's got a few errors in there. I got a little burn mark uh, from a laser right here. And I dug a little too deeply here, so we are going to redo the whole thing. Show you guys how I did it step by step. I am going to leave this one T-track in on my board. Uh, mainly, I just want to have one T-track. I don't normally use them, but it's nice to have one in case I want to use it. I only have a four foot by four foot piece of MDF, so I'll put split it in half. I'll put one half here and one half here. Now, if you're wondering how do I figure out where the corners are for my machine, 
And where do I line up my spoil board? Well, what you wanna do is you wanna take a bit that has a nice point to it like this one. And we have our machine set up at zero, zero, zero. It is homed to the machine right now. So this is the farthest corner when you're standing in front of the machine. It's gonna be on the left side when you're facing it. And we're gonna find that spot. So we're gonna grab our remote. We're gonna connect it. And if you don't have the remote, you can use the software for this that comes with the touch screen. But we're gonna drop this down. Oh, first you wanna hit this button. You don't wanna go too fast, but you wanna go fast enough to get it to drop. So we're gonna pull down and we're gonna get it all the way down. You can see I've done this before. And what we wanna do is we wanna find this spot. And me, I have a heavier bit here. I just make a little indent there so I know right where it is. So there's literally a little indent. You can even see the dust on the wood there. I made an indent right where that corner is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this machine and I'm gonna slide this all the way to the far right corner, do the same thing. And then I'll send it all the way to the back corner and do the same thing. And I'll have all four of these marked. And that's where I know the exact corner is. What I wanna do, since I made my board a little bigger, but you always wanna have a little bit of overhang past that in each direction. Not much, I did 3 eighths of an inch in each direction. I did 3 eighths this way, 3 eighths this way, and in the back, I did 3 eighths this way past those dots. I want it to be just a little bit larger than my surface area, but enough where my surfacing bit can cover it when it goes back and forth. So uh, let's go ahead, I'm gonna, these are all marked, and now it's time to put the uh, spoil board on. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise this out of the way. I'm gonna put it all the way back so I can keep it as far out of the way as I can, and we'll go from there. So how am I gonna hold these down? Well, I know on my grid, Every two inches, I know the front row does not have any inserts in it. So I'm gonna be able to move, measure in an inch by an inch and put a hole. And anywhere, I can measure in an inch over here, put in a hole, won't matter anywhere. Up at the top, I know I have a row of inserts across the top in those two inches. So if I measure in three inches and screw it down, we'll be good. So I'm just gonna put four screws in for now. Um, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch drill bit to make a little hole because the tip of my screw is three eighths of an inch. I probably will have, I'll probably add one in the middle somewhere just to give it a little more uh, support, but don't have to, but I think I will. One thing you need to do here that it's gonna make your life a lot easier. See, we have these three holes on our Z axis. This is our router right here. We wanna make sure that we have it in this top hole. By, by setting up in this top hole, it moves the whole Z axis down. We want as little gap here as possible. Reason being, we're gonna take this and we are gonna be drilling into the spoil board for our little inserts. We want that bit to be able to go all the way through. If you're set up here and you have a bit that's three quarters of an inch, it might not make it through all the material. It might not be able to go that deep. So just set it here, save us a lot of hassle. You can definitely change it later to wherever you want it to be. But while we're doing the spoil board, Let's just try to have it set up here. Or if you are here, make sure you have a really long end mill. You can see here, the screw is recessed way down into that MDF. Get it down in there good. Here we are in the software and I just zeroed and restarted the machine so everything is at zero. We want all the offsets to be at zero before you start. They must be at zero, okay? It's okay if this says over, nothing matters until you start setting X, Y, and Z. Right now everything is homed and we're set here. So what I've done is I've went in and I've downloaded onto the machine the flattening tool path. And you can see here in the image that it's gonna flatten the surface of that board. And the tool I'm going to use, this is the tool right here. Uh, it's a spoil board bit from Amana. I'll leave it. I like it because it's big and chunky. It absorbs a lot of the heat. Um, I've had great success with it. You can see it's burned a little bit because I've used it quite a bit. I use it for all my cutting boards. Anytime I want to flatten a board, I use this bit. I do have a few other ones that I use from time to time, but uh, for flattening, I really like this one. 
All right, so now we need to set the height. We need to measure the Z height and set it here. So we're gonna go do that right now and I'll show you how that's done. I have the probe, so I'll show you how you do it with the probe. So we have to probe for Z. And if you have the probe, this is it. When you probe for Z, you don't probe on this side when you're probing for Z only. You probe on the side that's inset. You can do this anywhere. So when you're probing for Z, you set it there. Then you take the magnet and you attach it right to the collet there. See, it's attached right to the collet. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use this, drop it down a little bit more. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit, as you can see here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit probe Z. And it's gonna say attach the probe to the collet, which we did, and now you need to touch the probe block to the bit. So we're gonna take this probe and we're gonna go ahead and just touch it. And you can see it turns green there where it says continue. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue and watch what happens. The bit drops down until it touches. And it's gonna go up and then it's gonna drop back down, touch one more time. I guess it's just like a double check. And there it is. And now it says, don't forget to put away the probe. So we'll put away the probe, just take everything off, set it to the side where it belongs. And now our height is set for Z. I'm gonna go ahead and push done and it is ready to rock. Now one thing I'm gonna tell you, we are about to flush up some MDF. This MDF is glued sawdust. It's gonna make a mess everywhere. You need to make sure you have dust collection of some kind on here. If you don't have dust collection, that's fine. Uh, maybe follow it with a vacuum as you go along, maybe a shop vac and try and collect some of that dust or um, open a window and blow it out with a fan because it's gonna get everywhere. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a minute, I'm gonna attach my dust collection and we're gonna rock and roll and we're gonna flatten this thing. It's gonna take us, what, 16 minutes, I think it said? Yep, we're at 16 minutes and 44 seconds and we'll rock and roll. Looks like everything's ready to go. So, we've got it all loaded. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the router and the dust collection. And I'll show you what I'm doing. You probably won't hear me anymore, but we'll show you. Push play. We've got the spoil board completely flat. And our next step is to take out this bit right here and we're gonna put in a V-bit, 60 degree V-bit. We're gonna load the grid into our Onefinity controller and we're gonna go ahead and cut that grid out. And I'll show you the bit I'm using. This is a 60 degree V-bit. I get this bit from Garrett over at IDC Woodcraft. I suggest you buy some of your bits from him and follow him on YouTube. They're great bits and he is full of awesome information with CNC, CNC business, uh, Vetric tutorials. Follow him, get some great information. All right, we have our V bit loaded into the collet now. And the next step is to zero this bit to the surface, our new surface that we have here. So I'm gonna grab the probe, set it underneath, take the magnet, attach it to the collet. I'm gonna grab the controller, hit the red button and use this control pad here Drop it down pretty close to that probe, but we don't want to touch it yet. When I get there, we're gonna go over to the software. Now that we're in the software, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit probe Z, just like we did before. And then we're gonna take this block and we're gonna go ahead and touch it right to it. And see it turns green there. And we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. You can see it's slowly lowering it. Taps, goes up. You see it's gonna go back down again. Hits, our Z is now set. It is ready to rock and roll. So you can see here, we now have the grid layer with the 60 degree V-bit loaded. And we are gonna go ahead and all the zeros are, you know, our offsets here are still zero and zero. And our Z, it shows what our Z height should be. So it should be set. I'm gonna go ahead and push uh, play and get us rocking. We 
we got our grid on here. It's looking really nice. It's spaced out every two inches. And our next thing is we're gonna drill the big hole for a brass insert. What's a brass insert, you say? These are brass inserts. I'll give you a closer look. They look like this. They have a hole in them. They're threaded on the outside. They have a little bit of a rim around the top. These are quarter 20 hole in there. Screws right in. And that's where you're gonna use your hold downs. So you're gonna screw right into those, all right? And then you just use a little Allen to put those in. So what we'll do, when we make the grid, you'll notice in the plans there are two. There's a big hole, and that's a hole to accommodate for the top here so that you can inset it into the board so that it sits below the surface a bit so that you don't run into it and you can resurface. And then it'll be the smaller hole that this quarter 20 screws into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up a bit. What we're gonna use is an end mill. Now I'm, I'm using this end mill because it's the only long one that I have. And I like to use a longer bit just because we're going deeper into this board and going farther down so I know that I'm gonna get all the way through, no problem and this is a quarter inch end mill upcut. Please remember to use an upcut bit because it just pulls that dust up out of the hole. If you use a down cut, it's gonna force it down there, it's gonna burn, it's gonna make messes. So use an upcut, pull that up into the dust collection, help out that dust collection to get rid of that MDF dust. All right, I'll put this in the collet and guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna zero this bit on the surface again, and then we'll run the program. So I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, here we are back in the interface, and you can see I've loaded number three. These are all in order, one, two, they're marked, one, two, three, you do them in order. So here's number three. This is the top circles, all right? And here you can see my offset, we're still set at zero, zero, and we need to Z, uh, probe Z, for our new quarter inch end mill. These should always be zero and zero. They should never, ever change. Should be exactly where they're set, where the machine is homed at zero, zero, all right? Don't move those. And do not shut off your machine in this process or you can end up with some offset holes. Uh, I have a picture from someone I, that was using my plans and I think they were off a little bit on the X and X and I was trying to help them out, I've been trying to help them out along the way here and uh, he, he had them off a little bit, so here's a picture of that. You can see you don't want that, so make sure you leave your machine on and keep these at zero, zero, don't, don't mess with anything. And now we're gonna go probe Z on the, uh, on the probe again. And I'll do it quick since we've done it twice already. I think you kind of get the idea, but I'll film it so you can see it. Here we go. Now I've got all the holes drilled, and you notice there's a little fraying. What you can do, take a little 220 sandpaper on block here. Just get rid of those little feathers. This is MDF, they come off real easy. Okay, so here you can see these holes, they don't go all the way down. They're just 0.2 inches down from the surface. So when you take this insert, you can see it has that ridge around the outside top. Fits right in. No play at all. I mean, it's, it fits snug. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take that same bit. We don't have to redo the Z height on it now because the Z is still the same height, same bit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill an inside hole here so that this will screw down in and sit below the surface and we can use those for hold downs. And it should be down enough that you could probably resurface this, resurface this one more time if you wanted to. But uh, yeah, it's gonna fit right down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and load the inner circle program, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it. All right, let's do that. Okay, you can see right here that we have loaded the number four journeyman inner circle, and we're gonna drill with the quarter, and, quarter inch up cut end mill. All right, and we don't have to Z because it's all gonna be the same Z. Really important, 
the X is still set at zero, the Y is still set at zero. We haven't shut off our machine. We're just continuing and plowing right through this process. Okay, and Z is gonna stay the same because it's the same exact bit in the machine. I haven't touched it or moved it in or out or anything. All right, and it looks like it's gonna take 13.24 minutes to cut this. So, on your marks, get set, go. I was just talking with my friend Alan over at Lazy Lizard Furniture. Follow him on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, but Alan, thanks for your help here. So we were talking about the holes that I just drilled in here and they're pretty small. I mean, they're, they're pretty small for this insert and you really have to, you know, when you wanna put it in there, you really have to give it some torque. Watch, you gotta push down. Now myself, I prefer them that tight. I don't want them popping out at all because this is MDF and we're gonna be using it as a hold down. If it doesn't have that compression, it's gonna wanna pop out. So for myself, I prefer it that way. But he was saying that he, he'd like it a little bigger, make it a little easier. So I'm gonna update the software and I'm gonna make mine that way so we can see how it holds. So thanks Alan for the suggestion. I'm gonna get this done and we'll be on it. All right, I made the holes a little bigger, so we'll see how this goes, and it should go in real smooth and quick and simple. Oh, wrong way. Slide right down in. Boom, pressed all there, down in there. All good. So, much simpler. It's still a pretty tight fit. I don't think I'd be too worried about them popping out. And they go in a little, a little smoother. You can tell there's still some grip there. So yeah, we'll go with that. I'll, I'll switch things up. It's a lot easier for the customer. I'll, I'll switch it up that way. It's done. All the uh, brass inserts are in. I have my T-Track in here. Uh, just so you know, the plans that you buy on Etsy do not have T-Track in there. But I have my plans available on Etsy. Link in the description below. And uh, they're only $1.75. Caveat, wait, unless Etsy raises fees down the road in a few years or something, might be a little bit more. But right now I'm keeping it cheap. You don't need to spend more money on CNC stuff. I'm not gonna charge you 20 bucks for plans. You just spent a bunch of money on a CNC machine. You spent a bunch of money on bits. I'm gonna keep it cheap for you. And uh, yeah, and I, I do have to give a shout out to Alan over at Lazy Lizard Furniture. I really appreciate the help you gave me, helping me understand that a lot of people that do this are gonna be, buy these are gonna be new and they need an understanding. So hopefully this helps give you an understanding of how those plans work. So thank you, Ellen, and uh, go follow him. There's a link in the description to follow him on Facebook. I hope this helps you. If you're new, if you have questions about it, send me a message. Otherwise, go be great and uh, watch this video right here, somewhere there, beep, beep. <laughs>